independent of the power grid. Fuel cells will go first into buildings. The fuel cells in the buildings will typically get their hydrogen from natural gas. That is already starting to happen. In the heart of New York City, one building in Times Square draws a significant portion of its power requirements from two fuel cells installed on site. Each cell provides 200,000 watts of power. They're very easy to maintain. They're very quiet, very clean. Uh, it reduces by 400,000 watts of power what we need to bring in from the outside. They're very reliable. They can be counted on. We hope that other buildings and future projects take the example that we've led. In the UK, the same kind of fuel cell is serving a considerably different kind of customer. Woking had one of the first public electricity supplies in the UK way back in 1890. We thought it was about time that we brought the first fuel cell into the UK, and what better place to have it than Woking. This fuel cell um, supplies energy to the uh, Woking Park, the Leisure Lagoon, and the leisure centre plus ancillary buildings. It supplies electricity, it supplies heating for the heating circuits and hot water. At the moment, uh, this we're actually reforming natural gas into hydrogen gas and extracting oxygen from outside air. But the future will actually generate the hydrogen from renewable energy, like solar energy, wind energy, hydro. One of the other things that we're doing in, uh, in Woking, which will be of interest to the developing world, is the recovery of the water that's generated. This installation here, we calculate, will generate something like a million litres of pure water a year. So what would it take to apply this idea to every city in the world? Right now, you can buy gasoline virtually anywhere. And for hydrogen to be widely used, it's going to have to be just as available. Most of the available hydrogen today is produced from natural gas using a process called steam reformation, which essentially reacts steam with natural gas, extracting hydrogen from both compounds. But the marriage of hydrogen and renewable energy sources offers a unique opportunity. Hydrogen is really the missing link to the widespread use of renewable energy. When energy is generated using, for instance, solar or wind power, the recurring problem is that the energy is intermittent. It must be used while the sun is shining or the wind is blowing. Unfortunately, the availability of energy doesn't always coincide with demand, which means that the energy must be stored to be of real value. Conventional batteries have only limited storage capability and are expensive. Hydrogen solves this problem. Conventional solar power development is accelerating. The cost continues to drop. However, work in the biotechnology and nanotechnology fields are poised to have even greater impact. There are nanotech companies right now developing entirely new kinds of solar cells which dramatically improve efficiencies while cutting costs. For more than a decade, wind has been the world's fastest growing energy source. In fact, it grew 27% in 2002 and is projected to grow to 15 times the current level over the next 20 years. When electricity from renewable sources is converted to hydrogen, we can store that energy and use it when it's needed. With this technology, renewable energy will become real competition to fossil fuels. Off the coast of Germany in the Baltic Sea, the U-31, a new kind of submarine, is being tested by the German Navy. This submarine is like no other that has ever existed. Its principal propulsion system is a fuel cell running on hydrogen. The fuel cell allows the U-31 to have excellent performance while operating very quietly, making it virtually undetectable when maneuvering below the surface. But the U-31 isn't just propelled with hydrogen power. 
The fuel cell also provides electricity for the ship's command and control systems and generates fresh water for use by the crew. Fuel cells are very well suited for use in all kinds of ships. They can also be used to power pollution-free train locomotives. Sixty thousand feet above Hawaii, a curious flying machine soars just at the edge of the stratosphere. A joint venture of NASA and Air Environment Corporation, its name is Helios. It's the world's first aircraft powered by solar energy and hydrogen. It has a wingspan of 75 meters and can stay in flight for months at a time. Helios could change the way we travel. Helios was developed by a team led by Paul McCready, an inventor who is no stranger to shaking up the status quo. McCready is responsible for a number of aviation breakthroughs, including the first human-powered aircraft, the first solar-powered aircraft, and with General Motors, the innovative Sun Racer solar vehicle. Helios is the first operational plane, flies with hydrogen and oxygen. The key to the extraordinary performance of Helios is its light propulsion system, enabled by solar panels, hydrogen and fuel cells. The Helios airplanes are aimed at flying continuously at altitudes of about 60 or 65,000 feet. Above 60,000 feet, the winds are light and it's clear and sunny all year. The Helios propulsion system has two parts. The fuel cell continuously combines hydrogen and oxygen to produce electricity and water. An electrolyzer uses electricity generated by solar panels on the wings to split the water into yet more hydrogen and oxygen. The loop is closed and can continue almost indefinitely. This lightweight combination of solar panels and fuel cells allows Helios to fly for up to six months at a time this ability to stay airborne for long periods has sparked a revolutionary idea, an ultra-low-cost replacement for satellites called Sky Tower. Sky Tower is a fantastic idea. It would be a flying communications hub relaying mobile phone traffic and broadband internet to everyone under its footprint. The speed with which such a communications hub could be introduced has other advantages too. Another capability will particularly benefit developing countries. With Sky Tower, such countries may never need to develop a traditional communications grid. High-speed internet and mobile phone service will become available to everyone and at very low cost. It really could shrink the digital divide. And Helios is a preview of even bigger things to come in aviation. There are several advantages to hydrogen as an aviation fuel. First of all, it weighs one-third the, uh, the weight of uh, conventional jet fuel, and therefore the range of the aircraft is extended, and it burns uh, without pollution. Already on the drawing board are new generations of commercial and military aircraft that will have engines fueled by hydrogen. Aviation presents its own unique set of technical challenges. Because of this, it will probably take longer for hydrogen to be adopted in a major way. We love our cars. I like big cars. Spacious. Fast. Power. People have distinct preferences and expectations when they buy a car. But with early generations of alternative powered cars, these have not always been met. Where alternatives are concerned, the problem has been low expectations. Hydrogen and fuel cells will change that. The auto industry is really banking on the fact that these cars are going to meet or even exceed the public's expectations. Electric motors provide constant output over a wide range of speeds, so they actually offer better performance than conventional cars. Performance. Style. Safety. 
quiet, the uh, low emissions, and I long for the blue 